In this video, I want to talk about container fields set to be interactive within your FileMaker solution. Now, what does this mean? Well, container fields are obviously where we're dragging and dropping documents and sound files and movies and everything else. In most practical business applications, you're going to typically have contracts that are signed, that are scanned, PDF. You might have some images, some Word documents. There are some people who actually have audio files or sound files or maybe even signatures that are part of their business processes and those things would be saved within a container field. Now in this video we're not going to talk about remote containers and the benefits of using remote containers and how to set them up. In this video we're talking about the interactivity settings to a specific container field. So up front let's define what this is and then we'll discuss what the issue is. So first off I'm in layout mode and a copy of FM starting point. And I can click on this field right here. I can bring over the inspector so you can see the inspector. And down at the bottom, you can see that for every container field, you can specify whether it is set for interactivity, which is basically interactivity on, or this images option up here, which is interactivity off. Now, what's important to understand is that these two settings have a dramatic impact on how FileMaker interacts with the contents of the containers. Now, interactive kind of says a lot about it. Of course, the way this is labeled, this really should be, you know, interactivity turned off or something like that. I, I, I understand what they did here, but this has always been confusing to me as a developing person. Uh, for an end user, they just simply select what's most likely to be in the container. Is it most likely to be images, which generally won't be interactive, or is it most likely to be PDFs and MP3s and movies and things that you can interact with? So that's kind of why this is labeled the way it is. In practical terms, when you turn on interactivity within a container field, for an image, it's gonna behave the same way for the most part. I mean, it doesn't do that much more. If I uh, start a new record here in projects and I drag and drop this image on here, we still get a thumbnail of the image. That behavior is the same as it is if the setting was set to images, i.e. not interactive. So FileMaker does what it can with this document, which means it thumbnails it. And once again, we talk about that in other videos, but that's a performance enhancing feature. But for something like a movie or something, there's a real difference in how FileMaker interacts with a movie. So I have a, a movie right here. I'm gonna drag and drop it into here to begin with a non-interactive container. And you say, well, there's an icon and the file name, pretty boring, it doesn't really tell you what's in there. If I drag and drop it onto an interactive container, then what ends up happening is that the container actually will play the video or has control. So I can click on here and I can play it. And if it was a little bit bigger, I could go backwards and forwards and all kinds of cool things. Now, you would ask yourself, well, why shouldn't FileMaker have interactivity turned on all the time? If it's so cool and it still works with images and PDFs just fine, then why shouldn't interactivity be on all the time? Well, there's a really good reason for it. And that is because when I flip records in the system and I'm flipping through records here and I'm seeing uh, records, and if I go here to the very beginning, interactivity places a tremendous performance load on your FileMaker client, whether it's Pro or Go, it puts a load on your client. And what do I mean by this? Well. Here's the deal. If I have a PDF here, or I have a movie here, how hard is it to display just the name and icon? It's almost instantaneous. It happens rapidly in a very high-speed fashion. If I put a PDF right here, and this is just a thumbnail that we see of the PDF. Now, that's another conversation in of itself. I'm on a Mac platform, and the Mac platform does create thumbnails of PDFs, where generally Windows won't do that. Uh, it's a good thing for Mac people, but it's something that's never been brought up to parity on the Windows side. Now, keep in mind, when I'm flipping through records here, and I come to this record, this is just a thumbnail. It's a tiny little image. This is really a thumbnail. It's a tiny little image. Over here, for the interactivity to work, FileMaker has to load the player, which is the software that makes this all work, and that takes time, and it has to load the player for each container you have that's set to interactive, and then it has to load the entire contents of whatever's in there. 
If it's a giant PDF, a giant Word document, a giant movie, it has to stream all that into the container. Well, anytime you move lots of data, you're potentially going to have a performance problem, especially if your server is in one location, like a city on the East Coast, and you are physically accessing this maybe from the West Coast or even across continents. So this is very lightweight. This thumbnail is very lightweight. This is very heavy. So that's why interactivity is generally not turned on. And when I ship FM Starting Point, we never turn it on by default because we don't want people complaining about how FileMaker is slow, FileMaker doesn't manage things very well, FileMaker is too slow to be uh, practical. Well, it's too slow because you have heavy things turned on and you're not building efficiently for a wide area network solution, a solution that's across the network. So now you understand the difference between interactive and non-interactive containers. Let's talk about how documents are put into FileMaker and we'll really get to the crux of this video. I'm going to switch over here to digital documents section right here in, in FM Starting Point. If I'm not mistaken, for as part of our ongoing test, this container here and this container here are set to interactive. These containers here are set to the standard non-interactive mode. So once again, these will perform at high speed, and these two will actually cause FileMaker Pro to slow down if there's any sort of movie or video or audio file in there. So let's take a quick look at this. So I'm in browse mode. I'm going to go to digital documents. I have some sample digital documents here. I have this PDF from the Amazon data center folks. I'm going to drag and drop that in there. Notice that even though it's set to non-interactive, we still get a thumbnail of the PDF on the Mac, or if you have a Mac server, you'll see the benefit of this on Windows. If you're just purely a window shop and you don't have any Macs anywhere, then this will be an icon. But you can press the button, this open button right here, and this is a scripted an FM starting point to export the PDF and display it for us. So that works pretty cool. Now, if I put the PDF and I drag and drop it in here, then you actually get an interactive PDF, which is really cool. And now what you would do is you would actually open this up, uh, make this container much bigger on screen. Um, and maybe I can do that a little bit here by doing this. Yeah, and you start to see how this PDF becomes uh, interactive. You can actually scroll through it and review it right inside of a container. And you could make the container really big on screen. Well, when we were developing FM Starting Point, we decided that if you really wanted to dig into a document, you would just press the open button here. It would open it in a native app on the computer. If you're in Windows, it's going to be Acrobat Reader. If you're on a Mac, it'll be Preview or maybe Acrobat Reader if you have that installed. But the point is, is that that was kind of our strategy. So we wanted the database to be very light in here. And then if you wanted to get the full rich interactivity, you would kick it out to an application that would run outside of FileMaker. Now, here's the rub. Some people, when they put documents into containers, put the documents in by clicking on the container, right-clicking it or control-clicking it, and pressing the insert file. If you do that, FileMaker actually doesn't know what to do with the file and we get an icon with a name. Now these are the exact same PDF, the same container setups, these are both set to interactive, but this one cannot interact with it, you know, interactively, because the way it was inserted into FileMaker. FileMaker literally does not know what to do with this file. It's just a blob of data that's in the database system, and the way it was imported by the user kind of gives you this problematic behavior. Now, I personally almost never run into this because I'm a big believer in drag and drop. I'm always dragging and dropping movies here. I'm a big believer in this. But if you have a database with containers in it, especially if the containers were populated with versions of FileMaker, FileMaker 11 and before, so 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, that kind of stuff, the containers were almost always populated with this technique right here, insert file. And that right there will cause your database to behave non-interactively if it's a legacy database from an older version of FileMaker that you've brought forward, or if the users are still right-clicking and adding the file this way. So the question is, how do we actually fix a container that this has happened to? Now, I'm not sure what the technical underpinnings are here within the FileMaker programming. I almost consider this kind of a bug. FileMaker does not consider it a bug because it's considered kind of historic behavior that it's always behaved this way. 
and so they chose to preserve this behavior. However, you can run a single script step that will take this item right here and make it interactive. Now there's no script step called clean up a container field and make it interactive and straighten it out. It doesn't exist. What I've done though is I've set this up actually on the contact screen on this container right here, which is the image of the contact. I'm going to create a new contact right here and I'm just going to drag and drop. Uh, I'm going to drag on here a PDF to show you how normally I drag and drop it on here. And notice it's interactive. I can drag on a, uh, a movie here. You go and delete. Let me insert the movie. Okay, so there goes the movie. So let me create another new record now. And I'm going to right click right here and I'm going to say insert file. And I'm going to insert the same red flag movie uh, that we've been looking at previously. I'm going to say insert. And notice that it inserts it in this old style, this old format where it doesn't really know what to do with it. Now I'm going to run a script right here that's going to say clean up file in the container. And it's going to magically clean up that file and make it functional. Pretty cool. So what I want to do is show you how this actually works and what script steps are in place here to make all this happen. Now the script I have here in FM Starting Point is nothing that I actually invented. And I think right now is a great time to talk about the folks at Team Digital Fusion. Now the Digital Fusion folks are based out of Australia and one of the folks that works there is named Stephen Baker. Now Mr. Baker actually moonlights as a Jedi Knight when no one's looking. He's actually a FileMaker Jedi Knight, which makes him very dangerous and very powerful. And that's, that also explains why he was able to tell his boss to give him a 30% raise in the last month. You will give me a raise. Hey, Steve, I'm going to give you a raise. Anyway, so these characters at Team Digital Fusion came up with this technique. And what this technique is, is, is to use the Base64 encode and Base64 decode to basically force FileMaker to take the container out, break it down into Base64 text, which is basically a way of taking a container and turning it into a long text string, and then re-encoding it. And effectively, that process right there causes FileMaker to readjust itself internally and to understand what the file is, and more importantly, what the extension to the file is. Because each of these files should have a dot move or dot pdf or word or whatever the file extension is that extension should still be in there now the way that you get that part out of there is by using this function right here it's called get container attribute and get container attribute allows us to go into a container and extract out certain things and one of the things that we can extract out of it this is all part of the modern filemaker platform is the file name and the file name we get back with it includes the extension. So as we take the container out and encode it and decode it, we reapply that file name properly to that container. And all magically, FileMaker suddenly understands what to do with the container, as opposed to before when it didn't really know. It wasn't smart enough to figure it out for itself. So once again, this is a base 64 decode and encode, this script right here. And if you want to see where the script comes from, what I recommend you doing is going to the teamdf.com website, the Team Digital Fusion website, and go to their blog or download section and grab a file called Interactivate. This is the term that they kind of came up with. Now, the sample file right here has these giant containers right here. There's a number of them right here. Uh, there's a, a, a PDF, there's a JPEG, there's an audio file, and there's also some crazy uh, People of Walmart video right here. So it definitely shows that the Team DF folks have a sense of humor. Now, of course, these documents were inserted here doing the right click insert file, right? So if we run this interactivate script, it actually loops through each of these records here, runs that encode decode that you saw and cleans them up. And suddenly you've got a Word document that you can interact with. And this is a interactive PDF inside a FileMaker. You've got an image that shows up properly. You've got an audio file that you can uh, play. And, uh, of course, you've got the interactive uh, lady, people of Walmart. Hey, y'all got a cigarette? Um. And uh, if you don't have a cigarette, that's not good. So, anyway, the script's all in here. You can tear it apart, play with it yourself, but it's pretty straightforward. 
I can tell you that this capability has not been threaded into any shipping versions of FM Starting Point. We simply did that demo to kind of demonstrate how that would work if you had this issue. Um, it may be something that we do in the future. Uh, it just depends on the feedback that we get about this video. So hopefully that explains the whole idea of interactive or non-interactive content within a FileMaker container and how to clean up container documents that were not really imported into FileMaker correctly.